the secret are back from book review number eight and we're gonna look at these books on Renaissance drawings. So let's get started. So I got this book at a used bookstore um, a couple years ago now and it is just a book that has, a, that takes the drawings, the Renaissance drawings from a bunch of different museum collections around the world and they just kind of compile them into this book. Um, or I shouldn't say around the world, I think it's mostly the English and French museums from what I remember reading. So, but most of the book is just this format with the art, a little bit of a description of the artist um, or the work on one side and then the drawing on the other. And yeah, so I've just found it really useful because it, it kind of, because it's not on any specific artist, you get, you know, exposure to maybe lesser known Renaissance artists and, um, and, and uh, a little bit about them. So it's really interesting. Yeah, so hopefully you're seeing some of these okay. The reason I don't do more book review videos on um, books on drawings is because most of the time they don't show up well. In fact, full disclosure, I have a great book on Raphael's drawings that um, that just it just doesn't show up at all because his drawings were just too light. So I'll be posting pictures of those on my story at some point, um, and then I'll save it to the highlights so everyone can see it. But yeah, so just really cool, you know. Renaissance artists are obviously a big inspiration um, to the art that's going on in ateliers and stuff today. Um, and there, there's a lot of good, good information here, so be useful. I've always loved seeing, you know, the before thing. Sometimes the, sometimes the Renaissance paintings, for me personally, are, can get kind of boring. So when you see the drawing, it brings a little bit more life to it. So, so let's keep it going. The next uh, book we'll be looking at is one on Michelangelo's drawings, and it's a big book, so go through this one a bit faster. Yeah. It's also funny seeing how almost like fantasy art some of the Renaissance uh, drawings were. I don't know if anyone else agrees with that, but sometimes I look at it and I'm just like, oh, it could be a Magic the Gathering card or you know, Dungeons and Dragons paraphernalia, I don't know. <laughs> it's just pretty funny. And then other things are so cool seeing the ones that have, uh, you know, been preserved so well. Because that's also pretty hard to find, especially with drawings um, this old. So. Yeah, there's a couple of Michelangelo ones in here too. Because you can't have a drawing of Italian Renaissance art without, a book without, of Italian Renaissance art without Michelangelo. Definitely um, a good one to have. Not an expensive book. Um, really easy to get your hands on. Um, so just really useful to kind of have, pull down, reference every once in a while. Um, again, because it's a book on a bunch of artists, it doesn't go too in depth um, in any of the written sections on any one artist. Um, so that's something to keep in mind, you know. It's not gonna, information wise, it's not going to be probably that mind blowing, but it. You really get a book like this for the, the prints. Okay. Near the end here, but um, yeah, wide range of, of uh, mediums as well. So you have ink, uh, chalk, red chalk. Um, some of the drawings have white chalk on, in them, some of the earlier ones, not so much towards this end section. Oh, there's one. So, yeah, really. Really great book. Like I said, just kind of nice to just have. It's, reli it's, a, it's a reliable book. It's one that you'll never want to get rid of because it's useful, but you probably won't, whoop, probably won't worship, but it's just always there. <laughs> All right, and that's the end. So this is a big book. Um, it was the book that kind of accompanied the Michelangelo um, drawings exhibit at the Met a couple um, years ago. It wasn't too long ago. Um, it's not a traditional catalog in that it's kind of just a big hefty book. Um, so obviously a lot of writing in this um, in this beginning section and honestly it just kind of has his work intermixed so there's no true like catalog section of it. 
so it's you know positive in some ways and negative in others um, I think it has some of his like teachers work in this early section Oops, okay er, sorry it's hard to hard to place this one <laughs> it is a heavy book <laughs> but uh, but a really good one Brand new. Sorry. Um, but a really good one on um, it kind of covers almost all of his work you know there, there, there will be some sculpture in here and some of his paintings but um, majority is the focus is on the drawings and uh, and the sketches he would do beforehand so yeah for anyone who's able to see this exhibit in person I know um, I know you know it's, it was amazing um, and really exciting and no book can really do it justice but um, but it is it is a good one it's really comprehensive um, haven't read it it's huge and there are other things I want to read first but um, but I'm sure it's uh, decently written as well so, yeah keep going through um, yeah so this one is definitely um, I know it's you know when you buy books from the Met they can be pretty expensive so um, it's kind of nice to know what's in them and they, they will sometimes just have like that display copy at the Met, and then the rest are plastic wrapped, and it's always bothered me. I don't know why, but the books need to be allowed to breathe, people. So, anyways, um, yeah. So it had given cover. It covers everything from his figure drawings to his architectural drawings. Um, I remember that about the exhibit. It was really, it was really cool um, to see all of those together. I mean, he did. He just did so much. He was a very prolific artist. Um, artist. So. Um, but yeah, so definitely if you're a fan of Michelangelo, um, you know, personally I definitely really like his drawings and his um, sculpture more so than, you know, interest in his paintings. Um, so it's just a really great one to have. Uh, it really just is a very comprehensive look. I think we'll say they could have done with some more uh, full page illustrations. Um, but being an art student, I would say that about probably every art book <laughs> that I own. Um, you know, so just keep, keep going. Okay. And, um, the only other thing that bothers me about this book is there's a very big end section that is just notes. <laughs> so they really took up a large portion of the book with just notes at the very end. So that's a, never fun, but. Um, you know, he just did a lot, drew a lot. A lot of his drawings are in um, pretty good condition. I remember from the uh, from the exhibit, I was surprised um, at how good uh, how good of conditions they were actually in, given um, given how again given how old they were, just like the last book. So, yeah, so I definitely recommend this one. It's definitely a coffee table book, but it's the one that's nice to pull out and. Um, and just flip through and search through, you know, the various drawings. Um, definitely, I mean, if you can find one with bigger images, which I'm sure there probably are, um, I just haven't done as much research into that myself. Um, then you know, you can weigh that against this one. So, yeah, I think we're almost to the end here before it just gets to all those notes. Yeah, so I know there are a lot of Michelangelo fans out there, so um, I do think it's a must-have for any any Michelangelo fan. That's for sure. Right. One downside is this gets rather exhausting to flip through after a while. Okay. So kind of just peters out at the end, which. I always find sad because it just kind of gets fewer and fewer images until all of a sudden they're just all gone. And then that's where it stops. Okay. So that is this book. I hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, so you're for next week, well, we're going to be looking at a book on Dennis Miller Bunker and a book on William Nicholson. So, see you then.